Review TIJ says, great video, Niran. Best of luck in your exams, mate. Again, the same to you. I'm not entirely sure if Toby has any exams, actually, but if if you do, good luck in those. His questions are, which do you prefer, your West Ham career or Aston Villa career? That is literally like asking me to pick between two children. You don't you don't even understand. I'm not even sure I can. West, West Ham career mode, because it sort of propelled my channel quite a bit, but then Aston Villa career mode was just the original, so I don't, I don't even... I don't, I don't know. I think I've enjoyed making West Ham Career Mode a bit more because my editing's got a little bit better with the music and stuff. So I probably have to say West Ham Career Mode in terms of the production, but Aston Villa is equally as, as uh, has an equal place in my heart. Do you think uh, Bernie Eccleston though will or should even leave F1? Um, yes and no. No because I mean he does a good job for the sport. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Formula One is so much more popular now than it was before. Um, so, I, he's done a great job in that sense. You've got, to, you've got to remember, Bernie Eccleston's been in charge of Formula 1 for a long time. So, it's, it's come a long way in that time. But also, yes, because, I mean, some of the rules... I mean, you look at the rule changes that came out recently about uh, fuel... Fuel... Um, uh, refueling coming back. That's the one. That's the word. Refueling coming back. Absolutely ridiculous. And just to make it more entertaining. Also, the fact he is literally money-grabbing and takes away some of the best Grand Prix. Magni Core was so sick. And now we're probably going to end up losing Hockenheim, potentially going to end up losing Monza and Spa as well. So for that purpose, I think he's probably served all the time that he needs to serve. Um, so I suppose, yeah, I've got to go with yes, but you've got to remember that he's done a lot for the sport in the past. The third question is slightly redundant, having already happened to do with the election. I didn't really record this until well after, unfortunately. Uh, but what do you want to do career-wise in later life? I actually want to be a journalist. Uh, in later life. I suppose YouTube links with journalism quite substantially, so it makes a lot of sense, and uh, hopefully I'll be going to university after the summer to uh, to do that. Next question comes in from F1 Maestro 26, the first one being, why are you such a corner-cutting Jehovah? I mean, it's just, the, the evidence does back it up, it has to be said. Best video you've ever made, and also in brackets, think I know the answer. I've already said this, so F James F1 Maestro, leave in the comment section which you thought was going to be the favourite one. I think he means, I don't know actually, I'm not sure which one, but leave that in the comment section because I'm interested to know which one you thought. Is Christian Clean a legend? Is that is that even a question? Is that even a question? Is the better question? Of course. Christian Clean is a legend. I answered earlier that he's better than Ayrton Senna, so he has to be. And thoughts on the F1 2015 season so far? It's been okay. It's been good in sparks and patches. The end of Monaco was like the perfect characterized version of the season so far. Boring for huge parts of it, but then sprung into life at a random point. In this case being the end. I think it's been okay but the battling at the front has really kept it alive and also how unpredictable the midfield is has probably led to it being a, a bearable season so far. PS Luton Rules asked what's your favourite era of F1? It probably has to be the late 90s into early thousands. Um, I don't really know why. I, I suppose it has to be in an era that I was alive because I haven't experienced any of the other ones. Um, but that is probably my favourite. I, I really, honestly, I don't know why. But also, what's your opinion on Minardi? I'm guessing this is related to the fact he does a Minardi F1 uh, manager series on his channel. So if you don't already know, go and check it out because it's actually really good. Um, but Minardi, oh man, I miss, I miss Minardi so much. So incredibly. They, to be fair, they've created some careers. Fernando Alonso started there. Uh, Mark Webber started there. Luca Badoa started there. I mean, who can forget Luca Badoa? Who, honestly, who can forget that guy? The, the the real answer is probably quite a few people. My good friend Stopmat1998 asks, F1 or football? I I mean, I don't know. I I honestly don't know for this one. It's not. A, I'm not. I can't even verge towards one side. It's it's impossible to it's impossible to answer. I I literally love both there. Both my favourite sports. F1 I think I've been into for slightly longer. So on that basis, we'll go for F1. Reading, FC or Brighton? I mean, it has to be Reading, let's be honest. It has to be Reading the Championship or Barclays Premier League. The Barclays Premier League has be biggest prestige, obviously. But in terms of action and, like, just honestly, the excitement in the Championship and the unpredictability 
is absolutely incredible. If you thought the Barclays Premier League is, in, in, is unpredictable, the Championship is amazing. I prefer to watch the Barclays Premier League, but in terms of excitement, the Championship, uh, the Championship, the Championship, a, ch the, a, a Champions Sheep, the Champions Sheep is probably a little bit better. What do you make of Wigan's recent demise? It's really sad because I really used to like uh, Wigan when they were managed by Roberto Martinez and obviously going far in the cup runs. So it is really sad. And who will get promoted to the Barclays Premier League next season? Season. God, that is a difficult question. Um, I mean, QPR tends to have pretty good bounce back ability usually, so I'll probably say, I'll probably say QPR. Um, God, Middlesbrough, I think, are probably going to end up being favourites as well. And I mean, the third, the third could be absolutely anyone, realistically. I'll go for Derby. I think that's a pretty safe bet. What do you think is the ugliest and best looking F1 car asked by the drag veteran? Ugliest Force India. I really liked it at first, but I hate the livery now. And I have to say, in terms of the, the nicest, I probably prefer Lotus. Potentially, don't hate me. Kenneth Ang08 asks, Tiamat Marduk or Into the Barrier? And describe yourself as a person. Tiamat Marduk or Into the Barrier? This is going to sound as if I've not thought about this at all, but Into the Barrier. And that is literally because he just inspired me to make F1 videos. I hadn't actually heard of Tiamat Marduk when I started making F1 videos, because I think he only had about like 1,000 subscribers back then, or possibly even less than that. Um, so I'd have to say Into the Barrier, because when I, when I found his channel, I literally watched through all of his videos, just howling with laughter, all the videos he'd already made. And it was, yeah, it was, it was awesome. I, I remember that day very well. And uh, describe yourself as a person, extremely laid back. You can probably tell by the way I commentate my videos. Extremely laid back in, in general. Dmad96 asks, why are you so consistently second? Plans for F1 2015, and who will get promoted to the Barclays Premier League along with Watford and Bournemouth? Now, that, the, I mean, the the third one is pretty redundant now because that was asked before Norwich got promoted in the playoffs. But why are you so consistently second? If you <laughs> if you if you watch the obscure lads videos on GTA, you'll you'll know why this has been asked. I don't know why, but I seem to be magnetized to second place. Every single race I do with those guys, I end up coming second. I w I could be winning and then at the final corner spin off and take uh, a, a surprising second, but for some reason it does always seem to be second. Uh, but plans for F1 2015, a career mode. I mean, surprise, surprise. But yeah, I mean, I'll probably be doing a Carl Sainz Jr. career mode. Uh, on there, some sprint mode as well, maybe another series with a few other people, uh, funny, mo funny moments on sprint mode, I don't really know yet, but I suppose the delays give me a bit more time to think about it, but definitely a career mode, and definitely some sort of online videos. So, a few people asked me the next few questions, Mr. Jenk, uh, V15 career mode, and Master Maestro asked me my favourite uh, football team, I am of course a Liverpool supporter, and actually Mr. Maestro also asked who my favourite driver was, that was also asked uh, by JSP F1 underscore 10 on Twitter and another dude that's about to come up on the screen, Alfie Clark. I don't really have a favourite F1 driver. I always tend to support the underdog in that situation and why just be, you know, it makes everything more entertaining and a little bit more unpredictable. So it usually tends to be like Bottas, any of the young drivers, I suppose, Daniel Ricciardo and stuff. Mr. Danger Days asks, uh, what television series do you watch? I'm currently binge watching uh, Game of Thrones. That's pretty much all I watch because other than that, I just watch YouTube because it's miles better. What's your favourite film? Not a clue because I don't really watch films that much. And what race uh, is your favourite or best race ever in uh, Formula One? Has to be Canada 2011 or Brazil 2012. Like, they, I mean, they're just the generic answer for that question, but they were so amazingly good it's absolutely incredible f1 petrolhead asks what made you start youtube his exams start on the 18th of may and end on the 17th of june mine uh, started hang on about a week ago when i'm recording this or two weeks ago when it will be going out um, and end on the same day, I think, actually, is that, or 12th of June, something like that. What made me start YouTube? Pretty much just getting given a capture card and watching some skill YouTubers like Kazooie and Hyerpseth again, some career mode YouTubers as well, um, and yeah, I mean, it was basically just pure luck. Zed Racers asks, how good are your dancing skills? <laughs> Nah, honestly, my dancing skills are absolutely hideous. If I if I actually put my webcam on now and started dancing, I would be sued because I'd end up blinding the majority of you. I just I just can't do that. 
Pierre Adam Cordal asks, where do you come from? What is your favourite and least favourite track or driver? And predictions for the Premier League uh, next season. Uh, I am from England, as you may have gathered. Uh, I was born in London, but don't live there anymore. Uh, favourite and least favourite track and driver? F most favourite's got to be Spa. Has to be Spa or Brazil. Mainly, or actually even Canada. Mainly because of the racing you get there. Uh, least favourite track? Um, it's not on the calendar anymore, but Korea. Used to hate that. So much so that I don't even care that it's not on the calendar anymore. I'm going to say that. Uh, most favourite driver, again, it tends to be just uh, uh, on the on the fly, basically. Whoever's the underdog in that situation. And least favourite driver, I don't really have one of those either. But if this was about GP2, it would most certainly be Sergio Canamassas. That guy is... Have you got Dirt Rally? Well, I mean, the short answer to that is no. Um, but I am planning to get it, hopefully. But... I'm going to need a much better computer, so when the full version comes out, because the beat it's only really a beta one at the moment, so eventually when the full game comes out, hopefully on consoles as well, we don't really know what's going on with that, um, And but yeah, hopefully I will get Dirt 3, uh, Dirt 3, Dirt Rally, and I should be able to make some videos on it as well, if it's good enough of course. Next question is, what are your fa- or who even are your favourite F1 YouTubers? Arava, because of his amazing editing skills. Timet Marduk, because he's just consistently, just consistently solid and good. Um, Into the Barrier and Ex Matty G, because they're just hilarious. Uh, I have a lot of favourite F1 YouTubers. There's a lot of really good F1 YouTubers in the community. You've just got to seek them out. Sometimes I get the feeling people don't like, I mean, some of them maybe. Maybe some of the other YouTubers don't actually search for some of the smaller guys. And there are a lot of good F1 YouTubers about Beaver and Chipmunk, obviously, and A. Eterno, my really good friends. All the obscure lads, although I'm practically paid to say that. Um, but that is actually, is actually the truth. So, yeah, I mean, there's pretty much every F1 YouTuber in the community is a really good YouTuber. Alex Zafro as well. Uh, for longevity and how many video, how many series as he goes through is absolutely ridiculous as well. So yeah, there's a lot of guys who I respect and do a heck of a lot for in the community. Now the next, uh, the next question comes in from Pepper underscore F1 Gaming on Ask FM. Your favourite video from ones you uploaded, favourite YouTuber and best interview you've had. I'm just going to answer the last one. Uh, the best interview I've ever had was of course with you, and the link to it will be in the description. Next comment, oh, next question, even, I've I've just given up, I can't say the word question for some reason. Sergeant Shredder 579 asks, if you owned an F1 team, what would you call it? What hybrid system uh, would you use? What drivers would you have? And what would your livery look like? First of all, I know it's the last part of the question, but what would the livery look like? Not grey or silver. You, like, how many grey liveries there are in F1 is absolutely ridiculous. Anything bright. Light blue, turquoise, pretty much the same thing, but yellow, orange, black and red, anything. What would you call it? Oh, I mean, it's a bit of a rip-off, really, but I, orange arrows. I just love orange arrows for some reason. As a team, they were so bad, but also just so sick, and I don't really know why. I really don't know why. It's a complete rip-off, because they're a team already, but that's... That's who, I'd uh, that's who I'd call it. I'd, I'd revive Orange Arrows completely. What hybrid system would you use? Right now, I'd have to say Mercedes because it's the most reliable. Ferrari are catching up in terms of pace. They've got the reliability. In fact, the reliability is probably even a little bit better. Pace-wise, though, Mercedes are still on top, so I'd have to choose them. Next season, you could have a little bit of a toss-up, though, between Mercedes, Ferrari, and even Honda, potentially. Doesn't look as if Renault are going to get their act together, though, before next season. And who would you have as drivers... Um, I would actually go with a GP2 driver right now, which is Stoffel Van Dorn, uh, because he is incredible, uh, to, for a start, he's just got the raw ability, uh, I'm guessing this is in terms of, if it was in terms of drivers who were available right now, I know Van Dorn isn't, but let's just say for the sake of argument he is, I would have Stoffel Van Dorn and Jean-Eric Verne, if it was just a fantasy squad of, 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 of drivers that you could have, I'd obviously have, well, I'd probably have Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso, but in terms of realism for a, for a new starting team, I'd go for Jean-Eric Verne and I'd have Stoffel Van Dorn after next season when he eventually wins GP2. Next question comes in from Game Power. Uh, Q&A, what do you study and how long have you been doing YouTube? Uh, I study biology, music and maths at the moment. Think of that what you will, and I've been doing YouTube for just over two years, I do believe now, started in April 2013. 
The Drag Veteran asks, how long do you spend revising? I only spent 10 minutes a night and I still got the grades I wanted. That is not much at all, but if it got you the grades you wanted, then that's absolutely fine, isn't it, at the end of the day? Um, it depends on what, on what country you live in, what exams you're doing. A-levels and GCSE vary massively in terms of the revision you need to do, as I found out in year 12. But in terms of revision per day, at the moment, um, I've done... As I'm recording this, I've done three hours already and I plan to do another hour and a half. So it's pretty much between four and five hours, I have to say, every day. And that's for year 13. You kind of have to do that um, to do probably, you know, to get the grades that you set out to, to get depending on what those grades are, of course. I suppose that's another variable, but yeah. Anyway, next question comes in from F1 Games PlayStation. In that melee somewhere of Dave's paragraph, I love Dave, he's an absolute god, but also, uh, why is F1 so boring at the moment is, is, the main, is the main point out of that paragraph, which is just a typical Dave paragraph. It's fantastic. But also, the question, right, getting on to that. Um, it's it's difficult, really, because it's, it's difficult to make Formula 1 not un sort of unboring, because... But the way the cars are, you have all the, the the downforce, it makes it difficult to overtake, and no amount really of DRS and KERS and ERS and GRS and QRS is actually going to be able to get really, really good overtaking and action. I know it was always uh, it was always back in the golden age, it was it was always better, but it's just just the way it is, it's just the way the sport is, and no matter how boring it is, everyone's gonna watch it who's an F1 fan at the end of the day. I, th I think it's still entertaining, but it usually depends heavily on other things like the weather or strategical errors and stuff like that, or crashes usually, not the actual raw overtaking and skill sometimes of the drivers. GJ3 asks FIFA or PES, at the moment it's a no-brainer, it has to be FIFA, but the way FIFA is declining and the way PES is getting a lot better, Eventually, it's going to be Pez. I mean, FIFA bringing in price capping and uh, price ranges and all that stuff, and every year it's like less actually gets improved on. Career mode's been the same for four years, so yeah, I mean, at the moment, in terms of potential, I'd have to say Pez. But as an outright game right now, physics, the way it looks, how realistic it sort of is at long range, at long distance, I'd have to say FIFA, even though close up and aesthetically, Pez is probably better. Daniel Brownsword asks, have you ever played CTR? It's got to be my all-time favourite racing game. I actually haven't. I've played so many old racing games on my little PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1, but for some reason, I haven't played that game. Maybe I'll get it on eBay and, uh, or get it on eBay and play it on my second channel, because I'm wanting to play some, um, some old games, if you like. Uh, old racing games on my second channel at some point. That'll be really cool. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that, and that may be one of the games that I play. Next question comes in from RER Videos 1998 and says, Here's my question. Who will be the next FIFA president, and who do you want it to be? Now, um, I'm guessing this is split into two parts of who I would like it to be, but who do I think is more realistic to get in? Um, now... Fairly sure there's only two confirmed candidates so far. Obviously, it only happened very recently. I'm having to re-commentate the second part. If you're wondering why, I'd re if, if I'd commentated the, the majority of this video before the election, but now I'm I'm commentating about um, Sepp Blatter's resignation. This is because I had to re-commentate the end. Got a new question, so I decided to chuck this in as well. Um, but yeah, the, the uh, Prince Ali, who obviously, well, no, that's not obviously just his, that's not his whole name, but you know what I mean. Prince Ali, the Prince Ali, Ali guy who um, went up against Blaster in the first place and then uh, withdrew after the first round. He is confirmed as a candidate and also David Ginola, uh, which was kind of weird. Um, I know a few other guys, Vanden Prague, that Dutch guy who uh, the, the English FA were going to back until he withdrew. Uh, is thinking about it. I think same for Zico and Luis Figo going back into the mix. I would personally like to see an ex-footballer. I think realistically the best thing for the sport would be to see an ex-footballer taking charge. That would be the best thing to see in terms of the actual game itself. But in terms of the the marketing side of things, maybe you would want to see someone more like Prince Ali or Michael van den Prague. Maybe even Michel Platini, the head of UEFA at the moment, who's also thinking of going for it. Um, I personally, however, would like to see an ex-footballer do it. I think you'd get the best, the best for the for the actual game, the actual the game of football. I think would uh, you'd get more benefits if uh, if 
if you ended up with an ex-footballer as the FIFA president. And finally, the, the, the final question, or I suppose the most simple of all the questions to answer is, do you have a brother? The answer to that is in fact a no. I am actually an only child, so no brothers or sisters, and I've been brought up uh, being able to, to play Xbox or PlayStation 2 whenever I actually wanted to, which is uh, it's a blessing, honestly. It's absolutely fantastic. I do kind of wish sometimes I did have a, have a sibling or two. I don't, I don't really know. A lot of people sort of give me um, mixed opinions on how it actually is, but it would be interesting to find out. It's obviously not going to happen, but it would be interesting to know what it's like. That's sort of beyond the point. I've gone beyond the question now, and that is it for this 4,000 subscriber Q&A. Uh, it's been split up into two parts. This was initially going to be a one-part video, and I had to split it up into two um, because the render times would have been about seven years. Um, so this has been split up into this is this is part two. This is now the end of part two. I just want to take some time now again to thank you guys once again for the 4,000 subscribers and for 4,500 and 4,600 and at the time I'm recording this 4,700 uh, subscribers. It's um. It's mad. It's uh, it is actually quite mad. Um, the the support recently. So yeah, honestly, thank you guys ever so much. Or for the question uh, that was in that would have been in part one as well about people I want to thank for four thousand subscribers. If if you were like if you're a loyal subscriber and you didn't get mentioned, don't think that I I've forgotten you at all. Like, I'm not going to mention any more because it would perhaps be unfair, but those guys were just sort of my friends as well that I know from Twitter, but just in terms of general subscribers that comment on the majority of videos, don't feel as if because I didn't mention you, I don't acknowledge the amount of support that you give me because it is absolutely awesome, the amount of comments and likes and stuff every video now. It is it is really cool, and I, hope, and, I mean, soon, this is, I think, the penultimate video you're going to see from me before my exams are over, so... After the next video, which will hopefully be a FIFA career mode video, I'll be back to normal uploads. Um, sort of, well, even more than normal, normal uploads, because I won't have, I'll be off school completely. So, you'll probably be seeing about five uploads, four or five uploads on my main channel every single week, and hopefully one or two on my second channel. Hopefully, a video for every day on one of, on one of the channels, or both the channels combined, uh, over the summer. I'll at least try and get close to that. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy the second part of the Q&A. Subscribe if you're new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it as well. If I didn't answer your question for some reason, I did have a few issues with screenshotting and editing for some reason, so if I didn't for some reason answer your question, drop it in the comment section below, and I will answer it. Or if you have any more questions that you just didn't ask me for the Q&A, Leave them in the comment section, and obviously you guys know I try to uh, respond to every comment, so I'll answer those for you. Uh, in the meantime, it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.